Okay, Guru, everyone. Okay, okay Guru. Welcome to the uh, six minute, uh, six minute podcast, if I could say that correctly, the sixth episode of Awake Minute by Minute. I'm the host uh, this week, Chris Houston, and with me is, as usual, Priyank and Mike. Uh, now, we actually have a special guest with us this week, Anna. So welcome, Anna. Yes. Anna. To the Hello, podcast. Guys. I hope you've strapped in and uh, booked out your full evening because these minutes uh, are getting longer and longer. So <laughs> good, good luck to you, but welcome. Uh, so first, do, do you want to introduce yourself uh, to, to the listeners, who you are? What's your background? Yeah, uh, uh, first of all, thank you guys for inviting me. It's really nice to be with you tonight. And yeah, <laughs> so yeah, I'm... I'm Italian. I um, been uh, uh, a devotee for a long time because my family also is um, Paramahansa Yogananda's um, devotees. They are all, everyone in my family. Uh, so yeah, I've been lucky enough to grow up in that environment, and uh, it's it's a great blessing for me. I really really enjoy. Um, you know, being part of such a such an amazing spiritual path that uh, Yogananda actually um, is showing us all. Mm-hmm. And you, you're in you're in Zurich as well. I'm in Zurich right, right now, yes. But so. um, yeah, I'm resident in the UK, like some of <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. don't know. Actually, I don't know if Mike is still resident there. I would say debatable. Yes. Got one foot in many camps. <laughs> so I think yes. uh, Mike and I are actually similar from the point of view, kind of uh, global citizens. Yeah, Anna fun. Devi, tell us. Anna Devi, tell us why. Tell us about the origins of your East-West fusion name. Oh yeah, well, um, I think it all started because my father read a book about a princess and the princess name was like something Devi mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so he decided uh, that was an amazing name plus Devi you know means like divine right so, divine mother yeah yeah kind of yeah so <laughs> it's um yeah so they and Anna actually is the name of my grandmother so my mm-hmm. father's mother mm-hmm. they gave me the name of his mother and divine <laughs> your name is as awesome as your hair is. For people who haven't met Anna, she's got the most awesome hair you can possibly imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm curious to know what the SRS scene is like in Zurich. In Zurich, yeah, there is a center in Zurich. Um, pretty hmm. nice. It's it's in the center of the city. Um, there are some. I mean. Uh, it's still open, which is great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Actually, being closed just for a little while because in Zurich the rules about COVID are not as strict as some other places. Of course, you know you need to wear a mask and there is a maximum number of people and there is mm-hmm. a distance. Um, you know you have to keep social distancing. But um, but you know if mm-hmm. you're organized, it, it works pretty well and it it has been working here so mm-hmm. yeah so you can still go to the center and um there are some very nice devotees it's um it's a very sweet place you know, yeah i feel pretty much home <laughs> I, I'm, I imagine most of the listeners if if there are any listeners at all <laughs> I, we really don't know at this point uh, are going to be all related somehow to srf um you know the srf devotees or what have you uh, followers of yogananda uh, how did you become a disciple? You mentioned your parents there. You know, they brought you into the four, I guess. For, have you had exposure to this from a young age? And when did you really start committing more time and effort to SRF and Yogananda? Um, I think, like, you know, it's not necessarily true that if you are, if you grow up in such an environment, then you follow that yeah. uh, path, right? I think that everyone has his own path and everyone has his own you know, karma and uh, mm-hmm. his own um, way to get 
you know, to, to spiritual life. But in my case, um, I think what really, and this is really difficult to explain because it's more like a feeling, right? I cannot really mm. explain that to you in words maybe as good. Um, but, mm. you know, it, I had this strong feeling about the fact that Yogana was my master from very early age. I never doubted that. It's, uh, it's a relationship that is as natural as um, it's, you know, the love that you have for your mother. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that, that was like that for me. So it's not much about um, the path in terms of discipline or rules or, or philosophy that really you know, made me feel like I had to follow uh, Asraf, but it's really the love and... and, and um, that link that I felt and for still feel for you, yeah. Ananda. So, that's awesome. totally devotional, basically. And, and yeah, I mean, that's awesome. I grew up in a, in a, in a, in a uh, Northern Ireland, and I think you and Mike maybe have some very similar, uh, you know, or quite similar up, upbringing to, to a degree. Um, so, yeah, really, really awesome to hear that. Um, we, like, we, you know, we've got a lot to cover in this minute and I appreciate we could probably sit and literally just interview you all day. <laughs> I'd, I'd be quite happy to do that. Um, but uh, we've got a lot of cool stuff to talk about in the minute. So uh, let's jump into it, shall we? Um, so the, the first scene shows a very cool, and this is minute six, uh, shows a very cool old looking prayer wheel. Uh, no, I, I'll, I'll stop there already because it is just that one little clip of that prayer wheel being uh, being used effectively. So I've never seen that really in person. I've only seen pictures and videos of it. Um, it's pretty cool. It transports me to the east, let's say, from, mm. from from my northern Irish heritage. But I mean, who can tell me a little bit about the prayer wheel? I think Priyanka, maybe you know. A yeah, little bit about I can. It. Can you hear me? Um, yes. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I've been to Nepal and Tibet and a couple of other places where um, Buddhism is uh, quite uh, rampant. And uh, they, they they use this prayer wheel quite a lot, actually. Uh, they usually have a mantra or a shloka, as we say, which is a, a sacred text um, written on them. And they're kind of, they're, they're usually just, they usually like hung adjacent to the stupa or the temple or the pagoda, which is like this big meditation chamber or or temple. Um, and they're, they're on the outskirts and you, devotees usually go in and they just like, without even reading it, they just like, they just rotate it. And they're like, mm -hmm. lot, lots of devotees don't even go into the chamber. They just walk around and just rotate all the wheels. And mm -hmm. there's some cool ones like you'll see in remote uh, like valleys and stuff. What you'll see is like some people will make them part of a river courseway. So they'll turn as the water goes. And similarly, you can have wind ones, etc. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're pretty cool. So what's the idea behind it, apart from maybe the obvious like the conscience, conscious interaction with a prayer wheel, is it that they all have separate prayers written on them? Yeah, so um, it depend, depends on the tradition, obviously, um, of which like Tibet, in Tibetan, Tibetan Buddhism, like you'll have a specific uh, uh, mantra that they'll, that they'll have. And they'll, um, they say that it's supposed to, you know, carry a blessing and it purifies, purifies you as you, as you do it. Yeah. Do they yeah. make noise? Because it's in the video, there's no noise. No, 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 no. no. It's just literally oh, right. rotating, other than squeaking, bearings and things like that. <laughs> yeah. So they're very cool. Have, have you guys, has anybody used them? Has anybody interacted no. with them? No, no. Yeah, no. no. But it looks so cool. I mean, I, I watched a movie once. Like, I don't know if you've ever watched this uh, Little Buddha. No. no. Oh, it's a very nice movie. You should. It's my favorite movie. Oh, wow. well, after a week, of course. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Very good. We nearly had to kick you off well, the well podcast. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, no, it's a very nice movie. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So they they go to Bhutan, and you can actually see that. It's pretty cool. Yeah. No, it, it would be it'd be really fun to to use them. I think yeah. it would be really fun to see them in Northern Ireland, actually. <laughs> um, I there are some. There must be some somewhere. Must be some somewhere, but not not in not in uh, plain sight. And it kind of neatly brings me on to what I want to 
say for the next scene because there, there's a, a a man here, Faroon Sonny. Uh, mm-hmm. He's the dean of religious life uh, at University of Southern California, and he's sitting in what must be a, a temple or you know a church of sorts, and he's and he's talking. But um, before I go into what he's saying, because it's probably going to you know uh, mean that we want to talk about that a lot. Could you tell me a little bit about this man, Faroon Sonny? Um, so he is the, like you said, the, the Dean of Religious Life at uh, USC, University of Southern California. Um, the interesting thing about him is that um, mostly deans in the US of, of religious um, departments of, uh, are always Christian. Uh, there's very few exceptions. He's the only Hindu, mm. which makes it pretty interesting. Of course, in California, that's the place where this kind of stuff happens. Um, yeah. And he seems to have a, an, a really good like attitude of bringing religions together. Like he's he's like trying to be like a more of a trans religious figure, um, and and um, he seems to have knowledge about the different paths of the different religions, mm-hmm. and and respects all of them. And that is that is pretty pretty modern. Mm-hmm. I like that. Mm-hmm. And Priyan, do you know anything? Yeah, I think mentioned yeah, that um, that uh, yeah, that that Christian thing is true. But um, there's also interestingly, there's two others. There's a rabbi at Dartmouth College and a, <laughs> and a Buddhist at Emerson. So those three are the only at the time <laughs> of filming. Those three were the only people that are non-Christians at that uh, to hold the chaplaincy position, which is quite interesting, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 No, that's, and that's he, um, in the book, in the awake book, it says it describes him as we as pretty much as we have, and it says he's also an author of a book called The Natural Mystics: The Prophetic Lives of Bob Marley and Nazrat Fateh Ali Khan, which is an interesting, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> interesting book. Well, I don't, I haven't read it, but that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it seems like an interesting guy. It it leads us into a series of. Uh, uh, short, short uh, videos of different mm-hmm. religious acts, but um, what he says is is really interesting. And um, my background, I see we all see the world through our, the lens, our, 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 the lens of our, our, our own eyes. But uh, he says Yogananda provided us a vocabulary to talk about the human spirit that got away from dogma and doctrine and ritual. Now, to me, that's a controversial statement, even in this day and age. What, what did you guys make of that, Anna? What, what do you make of that statement? Well, I think it's amazing. I mean, uh, it's a pretty good way to describe it, I think, because they, I mean, actually, Yogananda, um, with the way that he they explains what um, religion is, so the science of religion, um, explains, like, ways and methods that can actually take you closer to your way of um, feeling the, you know the, uh, the divine and that's great and and, mm-hmm. and I think it's pretty accurate what he said um, and meditation it actually is actually that it's actually like a, a super uh, method to 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 get closer to your own, own self and mm-hmm. Um, yeah, which you know that that's a point. Like with some religions, well, some religions, but in general, with the classic view of religion, that is more like um, about rituals, about you know about things that you have to do or or to say. Um, while meditation really gives you like um, like a mean to get to to God. So uh, mm-hmm. that's great. Yeah. And, and also in my experience, like, I mean, in a way, I come from a Catholic country, right? So, yes, I grew up in a family that was already um, in a SRAF, but my parents, they grew up in, in a totally different environment, right? So, like, my mm-hmm. grandmother was going to church, so they grew up in that kind of, um, um, of dogmatic. religious, dogmatic, yeah, a little bit dogmatic, yeah, let's say so. Uh, but, yeah. But yeah, but 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 they found that that's also was for them like um, 
you know, difficult for them to approach spirituality in that way. So actually meditation and, and Yogananda's approach make them closer to God because mm -hmm. they, they didn't have that kind of dogma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just think it's funny because my again I keep keep referring to this, but my background, my my mother was uh, is Catholic and comes from a very strong Catholic family. My dad, Protestant, very strong Protestant family. And uh, you almost have to pick and choose. You know, you need to be very careful in Northern Ireland. You know, which part of the <laughs> are because there there are two sides, and it it doesn't really. It's more tribal than anything. I think for the for the vast majority of it. Um, but it, it does it does make me make me think that in the East, uh, you know, in India and places like this, they didn't have the, the pressure that uh, the Europeans might have had over prosecutions and these things quite as intensely over mm -hmm. a period of time for the last thousand years or more that, that, that we've had. So it's just, it, it's funny, it triggered a thought about Jesus Christ and how Jesus 2000 years ago was walking around and saying to people, look, you know, divinity is, is within and, you know, the body is the temple. You don't necessarily need to go to places and pay tributes and things. Um, and he got persecuted for a lot of the things he said. So it just triggered this cascading, you know, uh, these cascading thoughts that I just wondered, does everybody else think this, you know, whenever dogma and ritual, these things come into mind? Yeah, I, I kind of, dogma is interesting because I, um, you know, like we talked about in one of the episodes, we talked about the yugas, how there is mm. higher ages, and then you go through the lower ages where a lot of the knowledge is lost, and then the higher ages come again and it's slowly gathered again. Mm. And the way I see it, described, I think by St. Augustine, he talked about dogma a little bit, and he said it's basically a vehicle to get the knowledge through the dark ages without corrupting it. <clears throat> but it only works so well in the end. And then when you come out on the other side, um, then the dogma won't do anymore. Then you have to start figuring things out again. And then people like Paramahansa Yogananda come and re-explain, reintroduce Kriya Yoga to the world. Yeah. Um, which we'll talk about later as well. But that's an, I feel like this is, a, this is like something that used to be useful. Now it's not useful anymore. In, so that's how mm -hmm. I see it. Yeah. Mm. And Priyank, anything to add before we move on? Yeah, the, you mentioned in India, for example. <clears throat> Obviously, we India's had its own fair share of like religious mm -hmm. and minority persecutions, um, especially with the repeated invasions over the last, you know, seven, seven, seven hundred years, seven hundred years. But um, it's it's quite interesting now. It's at a weird place. Like Western media, like portrays such a, a skewed impression of what it's like there for example when when i go there like if i go to south india where like christianity islam and hinduism are quite quite prominent especially like in kerala for example it's almost like a 33 percent split of all those religions the, the major religions there and if you go to a bus if you if you're in, in a bus there for example you'll see each of the symbols you know you'll see the cross you'll see the, <laughs> you'll see the orm for the, for the hindus mm -hmm. and we're all it's all quite a harmonious experience and this freedom of you know freedom of your own way of worshiping and it's um it's quite nice it's um, pretty yeah. awesome I remember, I remember, uh, we'll move on from this because I don't want to dwell on it too long, but uh, I, I remember a, a girlfriend of mine back when we were 15, she asked me if I was Protestant. I said, no. She asked me if I was Catholic. I said, no. She said, well, if you're not Catholic or if you're not Protestant, then what are you? It was impossible to be anything <laughs> else. <laughs> but that that was the mentality. Really, it really is um, that way in certain places. So. Uh, I just I thought that this initial opening statement was was really cool, and so the next scene then uh, there's various religious uh, acts uh, as, as I mentioned. So the man bowing his head, prostrating to the floor, is that representing Islam? I'm very ignorant with these things, so you got to educate me here. But uh, the, the next scene then is is uh, a woman uh, kneeling in a church pew. I think it's uh, Mary, Mother Mary, in the background. Uh, it's a Christianity and a Jewish man praying uh, and possibly praying at the at the Wailing Wall, um, which is in Jerusalem. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Has anybody been, yes. been there? Of course. Of course. Why not? Yes. Yeah. I wrote up a prayer and I put it into the wall. That's how I, I think that's how it's done there. 
I saw some. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You hope so anyway, otherwise you just littered. That's what they told me. I'm not sure they could have told me anything. I would have done it. <laughs> have, you, have you been there, Anna? Have you been lucky enough to be there? Yes, I, I'd like to go. I know. Mm. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait. It's on my to-do list, what, what, another mm. place to go. Mm. Um, so so we, we have other scenes, like many people raising their hands, you know, singing, praying, maybe in a, in a, in a church, uh, and then a, a person... Um, getting uh, getting baptized in water and all of these just come from his previous statement about um, various various religions and potential dogmas and doctrines there um, and really what Verdun goes on to say is whether it be a Hindu a Muslim Christian Jewish or whatever tradition you're a part of Yogananda chartered a path inward that connected you with your own divinity uh, so yeah, so so that was really was really impressionable. What what was your take on that, Mike? Well, it's still a bit revolutionary if you think about it, right? Like when when he says he gave us a new vocabulary. Like for example, he says SRF is the Church of all religions, right? Mm -hmm. I mean that is still something that that's not how religions work. Religions they have a certain belief system and they are very encapsulated and they say everything they say is true and they don't either they don't comment on other religions or they say they're wrong um and mm -hmm. and that's kind of i mean if you look at the big picture if you would be like an alien coming to earth and looking at people and their religions and stuff you would be like why why can't they figure out that they they're all trying to do the same thing but mm -hmm. um it is it is um, amazing that that boldness, especially when Yogananda came to America in 1920, telling people like, um, "I'm founding a church of all religions: Hinduism, Christians, Jews, every everybody, Buddhism." Mm -hmm. um, I think that's still pretty revolutionary. And unfortunately, I feel like the world still hasn't caught up with that thought. Uh, we're still not ready, but I hope we will be soon to uh, yeah. actually. Um, see each other as brothers, even if we have different religions. Mm -hmm. Just different ways, different roads to the same place. Mm -hmm. Anna, Anna, is that your take on it? You, it's using words that you described earlier on, actually, when you talked about Paramahansa Yogananda. This, uh, this is obviously something that uh, you, you agree with, I presume. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, I do. I do, and I think... Um, I think it's amazing also, as, as Mike said, it's kind of revolutionary because it's like, you know, you don't really need to change religion, right? You know, if you, you, whatever tradition you come from, you just uh, need to be open to experiment with yourself, like like uh, Yogananda says, actually, somewhere else. Um, and and it's about really getting to closer to your your own higher self and your own uh, idea of what is divine. And I think even in this room, I'm sure we all have different ideas uh, of how God is, right? You know, probably mm -hmm. not some people have this idea of God as, um, as a person, like more personified. And some other people, it's like energy. For others, it's love. For, you know, for anyone, is um, or the, the, you know, the motherly aspect of God, like the divine mother or the father, um, so or the guru. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think you know it's it's actually true even for people that are in the same path that we have different approaches mm -hmm. to the divine. Yeah, Andreak, what's your take on this? Yeah, agreed. I agree with the sentiment that um, everyone said. Um, for, for me, the uh, I, I I personally. Uh, connect with the formless or the energy nature that uh, Anna um, just described. Yeah, but as, as we say, everyone's, everyone's different. Some, some like the divine mother aspect, other the father, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. and as, as this is being said, um, that he, you know, you're going to charter the path inward, uh, which, you know, which um, in my opinion, it's super interesting that why inward? Well, we're always looking for external, you know, external God. Like you said, Anna, maybe God's a person out there in the clouds somewhere and he can solve all, all of our problems. But 
yeah, I, I think it's, uh, it's a really nice, uh, nice statement there from Varun. Um, and as he's saying this, um, this self-realization fellowship church for all religions, Paramahansa Yogananda founder, um, pops up in an image, and it's uh, a banner of sorts um, in a in a garden or in front of a building. Hollywood Hollywood Temple, it is. That is. The, I was going to just about to say, where is that? I think. Yeah, I think yeah. it is. Yeah. You guys um, have been there, have you? So all three. Yeah. 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 Oh, I have not. It's fifty-fifty split in this room. <laughs> <laughs> when I went to convocation a few years ago, um, they had the pilgrimages, and I thought. Uh, so there's basically a tour of the different uh, thing, places nearby. Now the oh, Hollywood is just down the road. Let me go to like Lake Shrine and stuff. But I need to go to Hollywood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it looks phenomenal. And they like um, they talked about um, like how they how they uh, procured how when Yogananda was there how they procured and how they brought in various elements of it. For example, the dome. There's such a fantastic story about that and the carving the, the altar carvings that are it's just it's just beautiful. If you if you haven't had a chance, um, I think the videos are still up to, to actually look at the, the have a tour of the Hollywood Temple, um, virtual tour of course. And and it's mm -hmm. got lovely descriptions of um, you know, how they built built it. Yeah, if you go to uh, the pilgrimage, I'm not sure. I, I actually didn't see the the video that you're talking about, to be honest. But if you were to go to the pilgrimage, um, they usually show a video of Brother Bhaktananda explaining um, how the temple was built and where they got the stained glass windows from. And oh, yeah. I think the dome was from the Golden Lotus Temple in Encinitas that fell down into the ocean. Um, yeah, that's like you said, amazing stories how that mm. came together. Mm. Very cool. Yeah, one day, one day it's another point on the map that I want to get to. Never <laughs> COVID list. Uh, there's too many, and I don't, I don't, I'm not going to be able to do this and have a job at the same time. It's going to have to be sabbatical. Or something. You'd be able to walk there when you move to Brazil, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's up the road, right? <laughs> or or bicycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Legs of thunder by the time I'm not going to cross all those mountains. Um, <clears throat> so th this this was this was pretty um, a pretty nice picture for me, uh, and I, I, I don't want to move past it too quickly. There's probably a lot that can be talked about. I just want to pick something out um, on the on the SRF banner. There's a symbol on the banner, and this is the SRF symbol. Uh, now it it depicts if somebody can really describe it in better detail than I can, but it's a, a, a circle of blue and there's a star, usually a golden star in there. Um, what's the meaning behind this SRF symbol? Who can take this question? Priyank, you're nodding your head. <laughs> that is such a hard question. <laughs> it's such a theoretical. Um, so there's 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 three there's three phase there's three parts to it. There's the golden rings on the outside. There's the opal blue, and then there's the five pointed star in the middle, and mm -hmm. that is the representation of the spiritual eye that we should be focusing upon in our meditation at the Kutashta Center. Um, we we raise our eyes ever so slightly when we have when we practice our meditation technique, and that is if you're privileged, if your um, if your karma is is you know there, and if you have the grace, then that is the image that is uh, there for us to see. But that that is the symbol. Okay. That's the representation of um, basically the nature. Uh, there's a, there's a deeper explanation. Someone else tell tell it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, each each of the each of the colors and each of the layers have a meaning, which I am not going to elaborate on. That. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, it, it's I see the star that five pointed star everywhere. You see, it, literally every if if um, anybody's listening that isn't really uh, you know on the spiritual path or anything, uh, I, I don't know who might be listening to it, but you see this star everywhere, and I, I always wonder to myself, well, how many other organizations or, or groups of people know about this symbol and what that means, you know, what it represents truly, um, and and yeah, it just sparks the thought to my mind. I don't know if anybody else has similar musings from time to time but um it would be awesome if you learned this stuff at school that's all i'm saying 
thing. That's all. Oh yeah, yeah. Be uh, better than learning the what is the difference between Protestant and Catholic? Oh, good. <laughs> anyway, move, move, move it on. So I. Uh, the, the, the image actually of Yogananda walking down um, the path, he's, he's got a real barrel chest there and it looks mm-hmm. like it's just ready for his big, his booming voice to just spring forth, doesn't it? Um, but, and then thereafter, uh, you know, he, he uh, there, there's a there's a video and then um, uh, Paramahansa, you know, Yogananda um, is, is smiling. And it's a very slow motion video. And my reaction, I'll say my reaction, I'll, I'll go to each of yours for, for yours. I immediately smiled and I immediately wanted to almost laugh. You know, I just I just wanted to laugh. And I thought about, kind of thought, it felt, it felt so natural. And then I thought to myself, well, why am I laughing, wanting to laugh at this slow motion picture of, of Yogananda just smiling? Like, what, you know, what is it that brings this out of me? But what, I mean, I don't know, I'll go to you first. What, what was your... What's your reaction when you see Yogananda in general? But this rare video clip of Yogananda, what reaction do you have with that? Um, I do smile as well, to be fair, but it's more like, um, you know, like, oh, so cute, you know, that kind of (laughs) 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 Kind of, uh, yeah, very, uh, it's very loving relationship. It's it's amazing. But as you said, also this posture, like, you know, Master Mm. always said this, this strong personality at the same strong. time, yeah. so sweet, and you know, it's so interesting. And um, yeah, it's really touching to see. He just looks like a warrior, a warrior kind of walking up through there, like a spiritual warrior that you talk about on screen. Uh, Mike, what, what about yourself? What's your reaction? Yeah, I, like, I like what you said there's like spiritual warrior, you know, his like his weapon is his smile, and he opens hearts. And it's it's very nice how he he walks towards the camera and it feels like he's walking towards you. It, mm-hmm. ha- it has like a really w- real feeling to it, um, and that's why it also made me smile when I saw this. I feel like this is one of the realest um, videos of him where I go like, oh, he's really here, you know. It is it, it is very special uh, that yeah. that that clip. Yeah. No. Good. And Priyank. Yeah, same. Um, I I always uh, seeing videos and pictures of Master, especially videos, and hearing his voice is always very moving because we have so few of them, right? There's Mm -hmm. so there's so few videos and so few recordings of his voice that each one is like so special and unique and different, and it, it resonates in a different way. And this one, for example, as you say, he's, he's got his, his hairs flowing down and he's mm-hmm. smiling and looking straight at the camera, which is obviously you. You knew what was, you knew how important those videos were going to be for all of us in the decades and centuries to come. So he's like looking straight into into your whole being, right? And mm-hmm. it just it just it can melt melt the most concrete or the most um, you know. Uh, the most iciest of hearts yeah no for sure it's um it definitely just speaks to me at a level that i'm not consciously aware of you know and he, he, he speaks to my soul you know um so so we have this scene that you're going is there he's he's smiling he's looking at the camera you know it's a video by, by the way I, I don't know how common video it would have been when would that have been shot really 19 30s or 40s, something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Probably wasn't very common to have video back then, um, which is pretty cool uh, that we have that. And then we have um, a scene where that video uh, goes from one um, to another, and you hear like a, a high pitched noise or something like a train. I don't know what that is uh, really meant to be, but I, I think it is something to take you out from the darkness into the light or something. Um, so it's a nice play there. And the next thing is what must be Yogananda writing uh, at a desk. And it says, buried in the dark ages, Kriya Yoga was received for modern man by the deathless yogi Mahavatar Babaji. Now I'll, I'll pause there. 
who is Mahavatar Babaji, first of all? I, uh, I've uh, did a bit of homework. <laughs> <laughs> Mahavatar <laughs> Babaji. Thank you. For Thank once. You. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell them that, Anna. You know, we're <laughs> representing this professional. No, just kidding. Um, Babaji is the, this is from the autobiography of a yogi. Babaji is the yogi Christ of modern India. The northern Himalayan crags near Badri Narayan are still blessed by the living presence of Babaji, Guruji, Guru of Lahiri Mahashaya. The secluded master has retained his physical form for centuries, perhaps for millenniums. The deathless Babaji is an avatar. This Sanskrit means descent. Its roots are other, down, and tri, to pass. In the Hindu scriptures, avatar signifies the descent of divinity into flesh. So Babaji's spiritual state is beyond human comprehension, Sri Yukteswar explained to me. And this is to, y to Yogananda. The dwarfed vision of men cannot pierce to his transcendental star. One attempts in vain even to picture the avatar's attainment. It is inconceivable. Babaji's mission in India has been to assist prophets in carrying out their special dispensations. He thus qualifies for the scriptural classification of a Mahavatar or great avatar. He has stated that he has gave yoga initiation to Shankara, and which is the reorganizer of the Swami order, and to Kabir, famous medieval master. The chief 19th century disciple was, as we know, Lady Mahashai, the revivalist of the lost Korea art. Mm. Very good. <laughs> very good. That, that wasn't by memory, of course. Very well read, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Off the top of your head. Wow, very so, good. So, uh, who, who, I'm sure there's, I mean, there's hundreds, uh, probably yeah. hundreds of stories about this. Mike, what can you tell us? Well, I mean, for us, he's so important because, first of all, he's the, I would say, the first in our line of gurus. Um, so mm -hmm. that's why he's also on the SRF altar, on the SRF YSS altar. Um, so he was Lahiri Mahasha's guru, who then was um, Sri Yukteswarji's guru, who was then Yogananda's guru. And so the, <clears throat> this is the lineage of our masters. Mm -hmm. um, he um, reintroduced Kriya Yoga, that ancient science that um, got lost in the dark ages. He reintroduced it, like Priyank read, to many masters and also to Lahiri Mahasha. And that's why it is possible now to um, of, uh, get Kriya Yoga when you're an SRF student or a YSS student. Yeah, so massively important. Um, I mean, he obviously he played a, a big role in in um, Guruji's life as well. He appeared to him um, uh, on on a few occasions. Um, so he's like also one of the I feel one of the gurus. Uh, um, that a lot of devotees use to pray to. Mm -hmm. He's, um, as if I remember, this, I th he's a, an avatar of love. Um, I'm not sure what the Sanskrit um, word for this is. Was it Prem Avatar? Prem Avatar is Yogananda is the Prem Avatar. We we say. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, so basic, so basically, he's like a, a he plays a big role in in SRF, and he played a big role in. Uh, Eventually, Yogananda coming to America. Mm. Mm -hmm. He was he was the the puppet master pulling the strings <laughs> in, in Lenin's terms, yeah. yeah. <laughs> as, as to say, to say Lenin's terms. And I, I mean, I'm sure you've probably got uh, some some good memory bank of Babaji, but you know, maybe what what does he mean to you? You know, what's what uh, maybe what stories can you share? Well, Babaji, I haven't seen him yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean that time? Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, that... <laughs> we hung out under the tree that time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. That under that tree, and then we went to the Himalayas together. <laughs> yeah. Was it a yeah. tamal tree or people tree? <laughs> tamal, for sure. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Ali, go ahead. No, no, go on, Chris. 
No, it's funny when when I uh, when you search for Babaji, there's so much material online. I mean, in India, he must be, you know, it seems like a big name in India. I don't really know the context of it, but correct me if I'm wrong, Priyanka, maybe you know more there. Um, there's YouTube videos, you know, it's in movies, in, in maybe Bollywood movies, things like this as well, um, quite extensively. Bollywood movies as well. <laughs> Like dancing. <laughs> no, no, South Indian, uh, one of the famous South Indian actors um, claims to have been initi initiated by him and then he made a, a, a film no, about no. him. Oh, that's great. I didn't even know that. Yeah, he's, 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 uh, he's, a, he's a big, big figure, um, you know, to say the least, obviously. But uh, what I was curious about was the drawing like i know what he looks like through the drawing the picture on the srf um uh you know uh, wall let's say um you know, his pictures everywhere who drew the picture do we know <laughs> is it too, too, too much master, of a left field question i think that i'm not sure but i think master like after the vision of baba you actually asked someone to draw that picture so he gave kind of a description and so it's mm. like based on that, but uh, I'm not sure who did that. That's awesome, Mike. You're nodding your head. You, you know. Yeah, I heard. The, well. I heard the same story that he had a vision of him and then told someone to draw it after that vision. Yeah. So oh wow, I did. You know, I didn't even know that. That's pretty. That's pretty awesome. So so we have Babaji then. You know, you know, really key figure, and you know, I'm working my way backwards through what um, what Yogananda. Uh, described here in this scene during the dark ages Kriya Yoga was received from modern man by deathless Yuri Mahavatar Babaji um, working backwards and Kriya Yoga can, can we can we just touch on this um, a, a little bit obviously a lot to say we, you know we're mindful of time to a degree we probably could talk about our you know for hours on this you can tell me a little bit about Kriya Yoga maybe Anna do you, do you want to tell us a little bit about Kriya Yoga to a certain degree. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, Kriya Yoga is that, well, as, as uh, it's briefly said that it's this um, technique that was lost, right? And then uh, thanks to Mawatar Babaji and then Lahiri Mahashaya actually um, was given back to, to the world. Um, it's an amazing pranayam technique that helps um how can i say because you know i cannot actually tell you exactly what well, this is the, the technique so it's a bit complicated we can we can, um, we can uh, quote the autobiography of a yogi about it Perfect. um we can say <clears throat> or if someone might do you want to read it out have you got the card or shall i read it out yes yeah, sure okay. um uh so we can say about about like how Kriya is um, ex, um, accelerating our evolution. Um, one thousand Kriyas practiced in eight and a half hours gives the yogi in one day the equivalent of one thousand years of natural evolution. Three hundred sixty-five thousand years of evolution in one year. In three years, a Kriya yogi can thus accomplish by intelligent self-effort the same result that nature brings to pass in a million years. The Kriya shortcut, of course, can be taken only by deeply developed yogis. With the guidance of a guru, such yogis have carefully prepared the body and brain to withstand the power generated by intensive practice. Ah, it's pretty amazing, right? I, Guruji also calls it the uh, airplane route to, mm. to God, right? Because mm -hmm. it's much faster than natural evolution obviously what, what what do you mean for anybody listening by natural evolution we shouldn't assume too much i think it's it's described as um regular as as good as you can living healthy living it says that as well mm -hmm. um so then imagine one million years of living how many incarnations would that be i mean i'm okay. <laughs> My math is like leaving me right now, but uh, it also depends on how old you get in each one and stuff. So, mm. yeah, so it is tremendous the, mm -hmm. the how much time you can 
to. Mm. And Priyank, uh, maybe maybe you have a, a bit more to say on this before we move on. Um, yeah. So obviously, I've been a I've before I came to um, Self Realization Fellowship. I I remember reading the Bhagavad Gita, other translations and other explanations, but when I read, I think Yogananda's description of this stanza in the Bhagavad Gita, which goes something like this. <clears throat> Kriya Yoga is twice referred to by Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. One stanza reads, offering the inhaling breath into the exhaling breath and offering the exhaling breath into the inhaling breath. The yogi neutralizes both breaths. Thus, he releases prana from the heart and brings life force under his control. Now, I've, I'm an engineer by um, <laughs> profession, and obviously I studied a lot of, lots of physics and things like that. And this sentence for me made absolutely no sense. <laughs> and and I, I remember reading previously um, other translations, and they just glossed over this as if it was like, oh yeah, we, you know, they, they become ambiguous when it comes to explaining this. But then Yogananda goes, obviously goes into the minutest detail because he's coming from a place of not just intellectual grasping but actually experience right and he then writes the yogi arrests decay in the body by securing an additional supply of prana life force through quietening the action of the lungs and hearts he also arrests mutations of growth in the body by controlling apana the eliminating current and thus neutralizing decay and growth the yogi learns life force control and and then he goes on to describe it in more detail in the autobiography and i was like wow this is like this is it mm -hmm. right um obviously that this was before i was practicing the technique and i didn't even know that it was a technique per se i just thought it was you know who, who knows what that even means but then we come we come and we actually are taught the practice and we practice and we experience for ourselves what impact has on your lives and i couldn't uh, my life as uh taken a u-turn and uh, for the better i would say and without practice heaven only knows uh, as george harrison said yeah. <laughs> i'd probably kick the bucket i'd be a horrible <laughs> horrible person you know as he said in the previous minute totally totally i mean i personally agree with everything you said there and your interpretation of it is and the reaction was similar to mine when you know, I, 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 I've said in previous episodes that I've kind of went through many, many years of, I would say, kindly, I was very agnostic. And I, um, I, I think when I was 25, 26, I really couldn't run away from life anymore. And I started coming towards yoga and started coming towards spirituality. And when I read things like this, it really blew my mind to the point of thinking, I've arrived. This is this is basically what's been knocking on the consciousness on the on the, on the on the on the subconscious mind my whole life so kriya yoga I mean, uh, mike maybe uh, what, what 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 does what does it mean to you you know having, having heard about this for the first time so i i kind of grew up in an srf family a bit like anna did so for me it was um always like some some something on my to-do list from the beginning um, my parents were talking about it and I was like, what is this Kriya Yoga? And um, as, especially when I was young, I was like, that was like the least of my priorities going there. I was like, um, a like as, a, as a child and as a young adult, most of the times I, I, I was like more into other things. And then when I um, started really meditating, it kind of made sense, you know, when you interiorize and then when you kind of feel like, okay, there is something there and there is, um, you feel like <clears throat> uh, you focus on the spiritual eye and you want to go deeper and you want to connect. And then you go like, if there is something that can help me do this quicker, let's go for it. <laughs> and then once I, once I got initiated into Kriya, I mean, it's a technique, right? You do it, but one, one, it really changed my life for the better. And I, I don't know what, like, I don't know. I, I, I really, I know a lot of people say that, but I feel like it had a tremendous change mm. took place in my life through that because 
I feel like it helped me purify a lot of my intentions and my thoughts and helped me go in the right direction. Awesome. And, uh, how about you? Um, I think there is also another angle about, you know, about that Korea initiation is, uh, it's also a moment where you accept your guru. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a very important moment and the guru accepts you as well um as a disciple and that's a link that it's forever and that's an amazing um part of it as well mm -hmm. um we can see it from the autobiography with babaji and layer masha but also you know um when when you have your your own initiation with with asraf that that is also a moment where you are actually accepting uh, uh yogananda as your guru and yes that's you so there is more, um, you know, you also get the blessings of the guru in that very moment. Yeah. And he's, um, he's basically promising you that he will take you to God uh, mm -hmm. if you practice faithfully. And so it's, a, you know, it's, it's a moment of, um, of love <laughs> as well. And it's a great promise that, that you mutually give each other. And I got my initi uh, in initiation, Korea Yoga initiation, when I was 14, so <laughs> I was pretty young. Wow. Uh, wow. So, and like uh, that meant million. a lot for me and for my life. That's awesome. And were, were you, did you get your initiation in the UK or in? No, in Italy. Italy? Yeah. That's cool. Is it, is it a big presence in Italy as well? Um, I have to ask. Yeah, there are many devotees, many groups, sister groups, uh, small, big, <laughs> anything, yeah. uh, in many cities. Yeah, uh, oh, it's awesome. pretty big. Yeah. Mm. I think in um, Europe, Italy and Germany are the biggest countries in terms of uh, number of devotees. Cool. That's that's awesome. And <clears throat> on, on the, the, the next point I was going to talk about here was the Dark Ages the comment on the dark ages i think mike you kind of touched on this uh before about the yugas but uh I'll, I'll go to you for this one what's meant by the dark ages you mean uh when the narrator talks about the dark ages yes but i think it was uh, meant to be yogurt and his voice to talk about um yeah the dark ages. yeah so he it, it's basically um he talks about um how babaji reintroduces kriya yoga to the world and he says because it was lost in the dark ages mm -hmm. and that is what what he means by that is in the in the low in the kali yuga basically like when you see krishna and arjuna they were happening um in a time that was probably like the descending dwapara yuga back then uh, maybe on a similar level that we are right now mm -hmm. or maybe a bit higher and then <clears throat> then once it, once but they had their last they had their battle against the kurus right and then they went to the hills they went to the mountains and left basically and i feel like um correct me if i'm wrong but that had something to do with that uh, their time had had ended for now and that's why they they went and they would come back in the higher ages again and um basically that's the nat uh, the natural cycle you you have those kind of techniques in the higher ages and then in the lower ages you lose them and it's a very the kali yuga is a very material focused consciousness where people don't understand energy they also don't have a vocabulary for it and that's why it's so remarkable that when jesus christ was there that he was like initiating people into kriya and like I think Guruji mentions a few saints that had Kriya Yoga, and he mentions uh, Jesus and St. John and St. Paul. Um, and it uh, must have been a much harder struggle. And now the time has come again for the, for the masses to practice Kriya Yoga, or for the ones that feel inspired and want to find God. Yeah, if there's anything that gives me faith that, you know, amongst all the, the news, uh, the bad news media, uh, you know, if anything gives me faith about the future, it's this, that, you know, we're coming through a dark age, you know, time of persecution, you know, and uh, we're, we're coming through to when people are asking more questions about spirituality and, and doing more things like Kriya Yoga. Uh, it gives me a lot, lot, of, lot of faith. Um, 
So but before I move on, does anybody else have anything to, to add to that? that uh, yeah. Just quickly. Um, so the last paragraph I had down to read was, the science of Kriya Yoga is eternal. It is true like mathematics, like the simple rules of addition and subtraction. The law of Kriya can never be destroyed. Burn to ashes all books on mathematics. The logically minded will always rediscover such truths. Suppress all books on yoga. Its fundamentals will be re-revealed whenever there appears a sage with pure devotion and consequently pure knowledge. Nice. Oh. Again, from the autobiography uh, on the same chapter of the science of Kriya Yoga. Hmm. So, so no matter what happens, no matter what president is involved <laughs> in some countries. Whoever do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're politically uh, impartial. On impartial <laughs> is <this> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the next thing, when you know, there was talk about Babaji, um, he, he appears uh, in the next scene. Um, superimposed over what must be the Hill, uh, Himalayan mountains mm -hmm. uh, and, a, and a man uh, walking through with a, a very large walking stick. Um, so that next scene, it, it's, it's very beautiful, you know, the, the Himalayas, it's the, there it is there, and what, what, what is that picture? Yes, yeah, it's, 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 I think there's that picture basically, but it's in that book, um, Awake book. <laughs> For, for everybody listening on the audio, um, <laughs> like yeah. a big... thank you, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Great for a podcast, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Showing a picture of, of uh... <laughs> you're, you're gonna have to watch that on video on YouTube if, uh, if you want to see. Um, so this this picture, then um, you know, the, the superimposed picture of Babaji com comes in whilst the man walks and Babaji. Um, so, so, so it mentions that Babaji instructed Lahiri Mahashaya to teach Kriya Yoga to others. Uh, and this image of Babaji is quickly followed by a picture of the one and only Lahiri Mahashaya. So um, what strikes me immediately, he's closing his eyes in this picture. Now, before we kind of talk about who he is, why is it significant that he's closing his eyes? You can tell me what that means. He's, he's kind of squinting a little bit. Mike, do you know? Well, I, I um, must say it's it's um, symbolic a bit, but it's also if you try to um, meditate on the spiritual eye, um, it is something that you use your intuition to see. Um, and I mean, you obviously you, you look up a bit because the spiritual life between your eyebrows. But also, um, you want to blend out the world, and that's why you close your eyes to um, get rid of all the distractions and focus solely on that one thing, on that spiritual eye, with all your concentration. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, that, that, that's that's my understanding of it as well. It's um, it kind of reminds me of my dad every time I see it. It looks like my dad. <laughs> <laughs> it's really weird every time. I see it. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Like, I've got a little here in my shine mask. <laughs> did, did I walk like? Sorry. You were going to say oh, no, something. no, no! I just I was surprised that your dad looks like Lahiri Mahashaya. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. got a similar mustache, you know. He, he kind of <laughs> he's got a balding. Um, so, so who yeah. can tell, tell us about Lahiri Mahashaya? Who wants to take that? Um, I can I can read the section uh, that we have from the autobiography of a yogi, um, and it um, it goes. Uh, after performing one's business, like uh, Lahir Mahasha sought the, oh, okay. So there is um, there is the, the answer that he gave. Um, he's like, after performing one's business uh, and social duties, where is the time for devotional meditation? That's what Lahir Mahasha asks. The harmoniously balanced life of the great householder guru became the inspiration of thousands of men and women earning only a modest salary, thrifty, unostentatious, accessible to all, 
the master carried on naturally and happily in the path of disciplined worldly life. Um, and I mean, if you have read the autobiography of a yogi, you obviously see that he was a very revered guru of Paramahansa Yogananda. Oh, sorry, no, um, no, no, no. He was the very revered guru of um, uh, Sri Yukteswar and Guruji's parents. They were both um, initiated into Kriya Yoga by him. And he predicted the birth of Yogananda. And um, he also predicted that he would go to America. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, um, <clears throat> he really was there to show that it is possible, like you said, you know, um, to, to meditate, to find time for God and have a family and do all the things that every regular Joe might do. Uh, so there's no excuse. There's no excuse. Because when you think about yogis, <laughs> like what, what do you think about, Anna, what do you think about if I say a yogi to you? What's yeah. the first thing that comes into your head? Well, well <laughs> you made me laugh. Uh, yeah, there's no excuse, but it's also like, a, you know, a message of hope, right? So that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And um, actually today I was... Um, I was reading the first chapter of uh, the autobiography just mm-hmm. because um, and it was so beautiful, you know, when uh, the friend of um, Master's dad that was also his employee and introduced Master's dad to um, to Larry Masha, yeah? he tells the story of how it happened in a miraculous way because basically uh, master's father didn't want to give leaves to his employee um, for you know uh, because he wanted to visit Lair Masha and he said like well you should concentrate focus on your career then become like a, you know a strange spiritual addict or whatever <laughs> and then they were walking and Lair Masha materialized there and told him like don't be so tough with your employee and so uh, he not only gave, you know, uh, uh, annual leave or whatever to his employee, but he went with him and also brought with him uh, his wife, so master's mother. And so from there, you know, that moment he became a Kriya Yogi as well. They both parents became Kriya Yogis and I started being devotees of Lady Masha. Such a nice story. and. Mm. Uh, yeah, and from that moment on, really, like, you know, in a way, Master's life was already kind of, um, you know, uh, Pre- preordained. Thing. Yeah, it's everything, you know, the line of course and everything was kind of clear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very cool. There's so many stories about Hirdi Mahashaya in the autobiography of a yogi. And one, one just sprang to mind there, and I'm trying to quickly decipher in my memory if it's actually the Hiri Mahashai, but Yogananda was struck with, uh, uh, was it a fever oh, or an illness? Cholera, was it? No, yeah, cholera. cholera. Cholera, yeah. And maybe Priyank, you know the story. Do you want to tell a bit in that? <laughs> yeah, there's twice where he was ill, but once when he was really young and once where he was... Um, with in his with Sri Yogeshwar, so I can't remember which one you're referring to. Probably the, the former, the one where he's with his mother in bed, and he's praying. I think, and then the mother, his mother, prays incessantly to the Hiri Mahesha to to heal Yogananda. And I think he might have caught eyes with the picture. Is this yeah. correct? I think he mentally bows before him, and then he. He gets a full recovery. Mm. Miraculous. Miraculous. So cool. So, cool. so Priyak, what's your relationship with Lahiri Mahashaya? It's a intriguing one because when you see him, when I see him, <laughs> you don't you don't immediately think, oh, there's there's a avatar or yoga avatar. We call him a yoga avatar, which is incarnation of yoga. Um, we don't, you don't immediately think that, right? I've got, I mean, I've got personally, I've got personally have relatives in India that look just like him <laughs> <laughs> and, and stand like him. Obviously, they don't have that unwavering 
half closed gaze ever at you know ever at a, ever at the different you know the actual cosmic causal world that he's always looking at but mm. they look just like him so i think that exemplifies what you know his his own purpose his own inspiration for all of us really because he was as we just said he was a householder yet he was a yogi of the highest caliber right um so he he's actually the most intriguing of of the lineage for me because i've got mm-hmm. as i say <laughs> so much family that that just reminds me of him um but i've got some in terms of re- referencing his eyes i've got a couple of nice quotes actually from mm-hmm. the um from the uh autobiography a couple of references in in the christ like life of lady mahasha so he says um to the awe of all beholders lady mahasha's habitual physiological state exhibited the superhuman features of breathlessness sleeplessness cessation of pulse and heartbeat calm eyes unblinking for hours and a profound aura of peace no visitors departed without upliftment of spirit all knew they had received the silent blessing of a true man of god um yeah that's, that's beautiful cool. isn't it and i think mm-hmm. that's uh, that almost references you know you were talking about his eyes are half closed i think i told this story but my sister when she sleeps she sleeps with her eyes half closed and i don't know if she's a yogi or she's going to be a yogi in the future but <laughs> she like you can even see like power eye but she she's in deep sleep <laughs> um and there's another section and it says um he who has attained a state of calmness wherein his eyes do not blink has reached has re- has achieved some bhavi mudra what is some bhavi mudra which is oh hold on which is uh sambhavi mudra means fixing the gaze at the spot between the eyebrows when the yogi has reached a certain stage of mental peace his eyelids do not blink he, ab- he is absorbed in the inner world a mudra symbol usually refers to a ritual gesture of the fingers and the hands many mudras induce calmness by affecting certain nerves ancient hindu treatises minutely classify the nadis or the 72000 nerve passages in the body and their relationships with the mind the mudras employed in the worship and in the yoga thus have a scientific foundation an elaborate language of mudras is also found in the iconography and the ritual dances of india so yeah chris it wasn't uh, it was quite a good question that you asked um, <laughs> why are his eyes why are his eyes mm. half closed um, mm. yeah it's not uh, that state is not a uh, Uh, one that uh, an ordinary soul usually can exhibit yeah yeah what okay one thing i yeah. think this is like the only picture we have yeah 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 exactly yeah because you want to tell the story anna i don't know go ahead uh, uh no i was uh, i always found that funny that there is only one picture of lahiri mahasha right and then uh, the story goes is that a lot of people tried to take pictures of him and they would take the picture and he would just not be on it <laughs> and you know? and there was one devotee who really just wanted to have a picture of his guru and he tried many times and he always ended up with a picture where he just wasn't on and um then he he went to lahiri mahashai and asked him and really said guruji i just want one picture of you please and then he says if that is really your desire then come tomorrow and we'll take a picture and that's the one that we have and i think the way it says it in the autobiography is that as far as uh yoga paramanta yogananda knows there isn't another one so this is like okay. yeah you know i cool. think about that all the time like whenever i get a picture taken of me i always think about that <laughs> i don't know why <laughs> thinking like am i going to appear obviously this is like pure ego talking but like <laughs> am i going to appear in this picture <laughs> one day what what if, what if somebody doesn't appear um no that's very cool cool story like thanks for sharing um and so you know the the minute really closes off there and and there is a voice over continuing um it's uh yogananda speaking really the 
it finishes um, by saying Bab Babaji instructed Lahiri and Lashai to teach Kriya Yoga to others and the transmission of the ancient uh, science from guru to disciple. Um, so we've touched on that before, right? So the transmission from Babaji to Lahiri Lashai to Sri Yukteswar to, um, to, to our guru Paramahansa Yogananda um, and it's it's a, it's a beautiful story. So, um, any any reflections then on this on this minute? What what did it what did it do um, for you? Yeah, I um well actually I was a bit disappointed not to see the castle, <laughs> <laughs> the golden castle, <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, yes. the Mahamadhu Babaji materialized for layer mm -hmm. master for Kriya initiation. So I was it I was slightly disappointed by that yeah but, uh, <laughs> maybe you need to tell the story for people who you might not know yeah so that's what happened when in the himalayas when um when uh, lahir masha was initiated by uh mahavatar babaji he materialized beautiful golden castle for him yeah and, yeah, <laughs> it was Lahiri Mahesha's like final desire or something, yeah. right? And you had this. I mean, it's a pretty grand desire, isn't it? Like, um, <laughs> <laughs> like what was it? That, if you, can somebody describe the castle and what was all in it? And gems, and gems and jewels inlaid in the walls, and yeah. like, it was pretty, pretty uh, uh, obscene. Like Anna, <laughs> Anna dancing. Showing, showing her. <laughs> yeah, it was was food involved? I can't. Rec I think there was food involved. I need to reread the book right now, but um, it was opulent wealth. I think is the way to describe it. Um, mm. Manifested by Babaji to with uh, Lahiri Mahashaya to say, look, you know, put God first, and you know, all your wishes essentially. Can, can be granted, but see, see, see in the, the material wealth being <laughs> being somewhat limited. Um, but that that's fantastic, great, great little story there, Anna, to, to round it off. Did, does any does anyone have anything else that they would uh, like to reflect on or add before we close off the, the minute? Two things. One, we obviously thank you very much, Anna, for joining us. Um, she's been a great uh, feminine person in this masculine trio that we have <laughs> hey, i'm 50 50 balance like uh, like yoga <laughs> like <Nanda>. <laughs> so yeah hopefully anna you can join us again in the future that was beautiful right. thank you um yeah the other thing i was going to say was um just a rumor really um i think i heard someone say this but you know, yeah we we got slightly confused between like not confused we misspoke between the order of the lineage at one point um but then that reminded me like someone told me that Sri Yukteswar was a surrogate guru for Paramahansa Yogananda so his actual guru is Babaji Mahavtar Babaji um I always I found that um you know it, does, it doesn't really matter whether it's true or not but the point the point is that you because Yogananda is in the last in the line of gurus doesn't mean that you're prohibited from being able to connect with any of those in the line right of gurus and I think that, that's such a powerful thing because we celebrate and we commemorate each of their birthdays and Mahasamadhis and it's each one is unique and each one no doubt will resonate and you each individual will connect with each of those differently so yeah i just wanted to share that hmm. no good point thank you um, Mike. i got i got one last thing that's very important to me and it's um this picture that master had on his desk <laughs> at five minutes and 39 seconds oh, on. Where, yeah. he's, where he's writing and we we were all looking at this and none of us could really figure out who it was it's, it's very blurry I took the blurry picture, cut it out, and put it into a Google image search, but it didn't that, get me. No, I know who it is. Yes. Oh, you know? Oh. Yeah, you don't? Yeah. No, 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 no. Gosh, it's Rajasi. Wait, there's three of us. Oh. Is it Rajasi? Yeah. I thought it was. Yeah, yeah. It's but the, so that's that's a mistake, let's say, in the movie because, okay, mm -hmm. you know, Rajasi picture probably wasn't there when Master was. Yeah. There. 
<laughs> no, but it's really good that this got cleared up. I, I was going to ask the audience, but I, <laughs> I'm really, I'm really Go glad. Ahead. Now I can sleep. Yes, yeah. very good. You can go to sleep. No worries. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Well, we we haven't picked up too many discrepancies in the movie so far, so I think that's the first. Mm -hmm. uh, hey? Oh wow, that's well so done. <laughs> well done. Well done. Yeah. No, that, that's great. Thank you, thank you, uh, Anna, uh, as well. Um, from from my side, great to have you on the minute, and you're welcome back anytime if you can spare an hour or an hour and a half. <laughs> Dude, yes. Anna, Anna thought she was going to be done in twenty minutes. I was like, oh no, Anna, no, no. no. <laughs> get, me, get me a cup of coffee, some divine energy. Get me through. Cool. Well, with that, thank you all. Jai Guru. Jai Guru. Jai Guru.